What's up guys, I'm DJ Avionics. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a green screen for all your YouTube videos. Before we get started, I'd highly consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that notifications bell so you can be notified of future uploads regarding uh, any video production, tutorials, and the like. So first things first, uh, you need to buy a green screen. Now what I recommend is looking for a package or a bundle deal on Amazon or the Wish app. I personally bought my green screen whole studio setup as a package deal on the Wish app. The link for the specific kit that I bought is down in the description below. But the one that I got, I got a green screen, I got a white screen, I got a black screen, I got three lights with the three light stands and the stand tripod legs for hanging the green, white, or black screens as a backdrop. And it came with a bag um, to carry everything in. Actually, it came with two bags, I believe. And it actually came with all the light bulbs. And I got it all on the Wish app, like I said, for $60. Uh, it was like around mid-60s at the time. And then I paid about less than $20 shipping. So in all, um, the whole total was less than 90 bucks, And I received it in like three days. But if you're not a big fan of the Wish app, there's a lot of kits and bundles on Amazon as well. So the first thing that I did once my green screen kit came in, I actually put all three, the green, the white, and the black uh, backdrops in the washing machine because it comes all folded up so it shows all the creases and everything. So I wanted to give them a fresh start and kind of soften up the fabric. So I went ahead and threw them in the washer, um, added some fabric softener. That way, um, like I said, all the folds and creases will start to softly come out but there's a little bit more work involved. When they're all finished washing in the washing machine, you do not want to put them in the dryer. You want to hang dry them somewhere in your house or on a clothesline, whatever. I actually hung all three of mine over the banister of my stairs that go downstairs and I just let it hang there for a few hours. The next thing you're going to want to do is finish getting all those folds, creases completely gone. So I went on Amazon and I actually got this. It's actually a pure steam steamer for clothes. You're going to want to steam iron all the wrinkles and extra folds out after washing them. After letting your green screen completely dry hanging over something, I actually went ahead and posted my green screen on the wall behind me as you can see with thumbtacks. I carefully positioned it how I wanted it to be because I'm not going to be using the green screen anywhere else. This is where I'm going to be using it. So I went ahead and thumbtacked all four corners. What you want to do, you want to stretch it out. Um, not too much because you're going to rip the green screen, but you want to stretch it out and get, that way you get rid of all and folds and creases and bumps. And then once you do that, you're going to go ahead and fill your pure steam, steam iron of choice up with water. And you're basically going to steam iron your green screen in place. Link for the description for this bad boy down below. Now after your first run of using the pure steam cleaner or steaming iron of choice, um, it's not going to be completely gone. You're going to want to do that for like a couple times during the day, um, even a few days at a time. I think it took mine about two or three days um, just steam ironing it throughout the day because you want to get rid of what happens is if you don't get rid of all the folds and creases when you have all your lights shining, you're gonna be creating shadows. And shadows are bad for green screen because you will see it in your final project. In the meantime, while you're trying to get rid of all those folds, creases, and whatnot, you can go ahead and start setting up your lights. Now, setting up your lights is crucial on a green screen because you don't want the lights too close, you don't want the lights too far, you want it so it floods, basically it floods the entire green screen with light creating no shadows. So with my setup, how I have it is I have the light stands um, with the light bulbs about 30 inches away from the green screen wall, one on each side um, of my table. And without using the diffusing umbrellas for those two on the ends of the table, it's pointing directly and kind of flooding the whole area of that whole wall. I noticed that when I did use the diffusing umbrellas, that there were some dark areas, so I decided to leave those um, off, the, off the light stands. Another thing that I do is I go ahead and close the blinds to this window that all this light is coming from. I close the blinds and I, I want to eliminate that light source as well. That way the green screen is just relying on the ones on the stands. 
if you can at all possible, try to set up your green screen somewhere where there's not a lot of windows around. That way, like I said, it'll rely just on your, on your green screen lights. As you can see, I have a window right there and I decided to put a, uh, a black tablecloth of some sort to block out that light because with that light coming in, the sunlight coming in from the window along with my green screen light, it makes it makes it look really weird so I decided to eliminate that just by putting draping that um, black it's a black tablecloth hanging over my window to eliminate that light source and just so my green screen can rely on my green screen lights now I use my third light bulb and light stand as my main light source shining on me it's positioned in front of my table and high and creating a light downwards angle on my face. Now once again with my setup I have my lights to the side and then I have my front light shining on my face. Now with what I do I'm sitting behind my table. Um, now when I sit behind my table when I position my body I'm not positioning myself too close to the wall because if so then you're going to create a shadow of your body from your light sources and like I said that's bad. So when I'm, whenever I'm sitting behind my table I'm sitting pretty up close to the edge and it turns out pretty good. But as I mentioned getting rid of all those folds, creases and whatnot on your green screen is crucial and positioning your lighting is crucial. So then what you're going to do is you're going to want to take some test shots uh, make sure you're, you did position all the lights properly um, where you're going to stand, um, see if there's any shadows. It may take several takes of you video recording and testing everything out. It's basically trial and error, but once you set it, you can forget it. So when I'm video editing, I'm using either my Apple iMac or my Apple MacBook Pro. Okay, so now we're going to be working with Final Cut Pro X. So I previously recorded a video clip of myself, a short video clip, and um, we're just going to quickly preview what I had recorded. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove that green screen and we're going to add a backdrop um, of being in a hockey rink. So we have Final Cut open. I'm basically going to uh, drag in my video clip, which is this one, Blackhawks green screen. Okay, and it's a very short clip. Um, Briefly, if, if, if everything's not in view, what you want to do is come over here and it's basically zoomed in. You want to zoom out. So go ahead and change, one, change that to fit if it's not already in fit. That way you can see everything. Okay, so here we have the clip. It's a four second, less than four second clip. Now, I don't want that table to be shown. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to crop that. Now to crop it, I'm going to select the video clip, uh, highlight it so it's yellow, and I'm just going to go ahead and zoom it in. It's going to be easier for me to eliminate that by zooming or scaling the video clip. So we're just going to basically just cut it off, move the slider as you see that I'm doing, and then we want to, now my head is cut off, so I'm just going to change the, the Y axis position by going over here to where my arrow is and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag myself or that video clip down to about you don't want too much because then your whole video comes out of frame so right about there so I've basically dropped it down um, minus 89 pixels and I've scaled it 118 percent so I've repositioned myself in the clip so there now the table is not shown so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and bring in our background image that we're going to use that's going to limit, that's going to replace the green screen. So here I have my hockey rink picture. So I'm going to drag that from Finder and I'm going to actually drop it below the, um, the video of myself. Okay, we're going to, let's go ahead and trim our hockey rink clip. Simply go to the edge here. Um, while the video is selected in yellow and you're going to want that little cursor to appear and you're basically going to press and hold and drag it and it should snap by default to the length of this clip so right now we still don't see anything right we just we still see the green screen so what we're going to want to do is go over here to the right 
And um, if the effects browser isn't already shown, um, you click on this, which is the effects browser. And you're going to want to go ahead and just click on all. And we're going to search. We're going to search for keyer, K-E-Y-E-R. And that's what, we're, that's what we need. We need this keyer effect to be basically placed on our Blackhawks green screen video clip. So go ahead and just click and drag it on top. So, so we've already just eliminated that green screen. Pretty simple, huh? Now, if you have not um, taken out all your creases and folds out of that green screen, you're going to be seeing some um, defects uh, on the background of the hockey ring. So let's go ahead and preview that. And as I mentioned, my studio is already set up perfectly the way I want it to. So that way there are no defects being shown on the green screen um, project. But if you do have some uh, defects, a, a tip here is um, first select the, your video clip that has the green screen and then go over to the right to the inspector panel and in the key or window box here, one thing that you usually are going to want to change if you see some some defect, if you see partial uh, green screen patches here and there, you're going to want to click this drop down menu called Matte Tools. And then the levels here, you're going to want to move it, move the center slider button to the right. And that should eliminate most of the problems that I see happening. I'm going to go ahead and undo that by hitting Command Z because I already have everything perfect. And that's basically how you get that done um, in Final Cut Pro X. Now, I'm going to go ahead and render this out. Um, I use Compressor. I highly recommend you um, downloading the Compressor app. Um, so a little tip, little FYI here, Final Cut Pro X is um, you have to purchase the program. Um, it's a 300, I believe it's $350 from the uh, Apple App Store. And the Compressor is $50 on the App Store. Um, and they work, Compressor works hand in hand with Final Cut Pro X. Basically, you render out automatically um, your project file through Compressor. It basically compresses your file so it's usable to be able to be shared and viewed on any device. So I'm going to go ahead and send to Compressor, send the whole project to Compressor. Okay, so here's our project green screen tutorial. And I have my presets already made. So I'm going to basically just drag and drop the 1920 by 1080 onto there. I'm going to go over here to the right and um, change the name to final. So that's my final video. I'm going to hit the video tab here. And I just want to verify that my frame size is what I want. I want to export at 1920 by 1080. And the frame rate matches the frame rate of the actual video clip, which is 29.97. And I'm basically going to hit start batch. And since it's only a four second video clip, um, my computer is going to process that pretty fast. And it's done. So if I go into uh, Finder, it automatically saves mine to, to my desktop. That's how I have mine set up. So now here's our final project. I'll go ahead and hit the preview button with the space bar. And there's your final green screen project from start to finish. And that, my friends, is how to set up a green screen studio and post-production of it in Final Cut Pro X. If you guys have any questions at all about how to do all this and even any steps in Final Cut Pro X, please leave them down below in the comments section and I will get to them as soon as possible. I would appreciate it if you guys gave my video a like and like I said, I'd highly consider subscribing to my channel and ring that notifications bell so you can be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching. I'm DJ Avionics.